there's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world. An ancient African ritual, the spectacle to end all spectacles. A hundred thousand virgins singing, dancing, paying homage to their king. He's Maswati III, the absolute ruler of Swaziland, and he's on the lookout for another bride. Now, Maswati's no ordinary monarch. He leads an extraordinary, exotic life. At 38, he's accumulated 12 or 13 wives and we think 27 children. We think because royal protocol forbids mere commoners knowing such personal details. But in a rare audience with His Majesty, we were able to raise these and other more serious questions about the King and his kingdom. <laughs> Once a year, the stunning young women of Swaziland do what they've done for centuries. In wave after wave, they come from all corners of the country to perform in the Reed Festival, a spectacular dance of pride. one of the great signs. It's colourful, it's noisy and it's the real thing. This celebration isn't being put on for the tourists, there are hardly any tourists here. All these young women and there are something like 100,000 of them are dancing for their king and their country. Why is a modern woman doing this? I'm a Swazi so the... and it's my culture so I have to do it. And Swaziland's ruler, His Majesty King Maswati III, clearly likes what he sees. It's not often you get so close to a culture so different to ours. It's even rarer to be invited to meet a king. Hello, Your Majesty. Nice to meet you. Hello. My name Hello. is Tara. Greetings. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Greetings from Australia. <laughs> thank you. Protocol and politeness make this a slightly <laughs> awkward audience between king and commoner until we compare countries. And, uh, of course, you've managed to overcome all the problems, challenges of uh, unemployment, poverty. We are still going through that uh, process of uh, fighting that. He's right. His tiny, impoverished country faces huge problems, but King Maswati is also condemned. The critics say he's a despot. Some of the criticism about you is that you're running the country into the ground and, That's that, right. and that you are one of the <coughs> ten worst dictators in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I was surprised when I saw that and uh, I even asked myself, what is a dictator in this world? I don't know if people know the definition of dictator. So you're not a dictator? I don't consider myself to be a dictator, uh, never at all. Certainly he is an absolute monarch, but in my time in Swaziland, the king didn't show any signs of running the place like a dictator. Certainly not like Africa's supreme tyrant, Robert Mugabe. At 38, King Maswati III is a young man ruling an old culture. 60 Minutes first met King Maswati as a gentle 18-year-old. It was his coronation, and it was 20 years ago. It's interesting to see myself that I used to look like this, <laughs> <laughs> so young. <laughs> this is the first time he's seen our footage of the day he became the Lion King of Swaziland. You look a bit unsure of yourself here. You and people are looking at you. <laughs> it's something to worry <laughs> sometimes. But it's something you have to get used to as a king. Well, now I've got used to it, uh, but at that time uh, I was really not used to it. But 20 years on, he's become very used to the regal lifestyle, according to those who say his legacy is one of lavish excess 
while 70% of the population is destitute. One big criticism is that you are a big spender, despite the poverty of your people. Is that true? They don't know what they are talking about. Uh, they haven't got that information. It's speculation. That's what they do. They speculate, saying I'm a big spender. Are you a big spender? Uh, I'm not a big spender. It's not true. <laughs> do you call it your majesty? Yes, it's a majesty. Having met the most important man in the land, I'm now invited to meet the most important woman. Not any of the king's wives, they're off limits, but the king's mother, the queen mother. Hello, Hello Your Majesty, it's very nice to meet you. My translator is the urbane Sithle Delamini, who, when in the presence of the king and the queen mother, is, as you can see, on his knees. It's a sign of respect. But you're a professional man, you're an adult. Do you sometimes feel like you're not being shown respect? Oh no, it's a part of us. Um, if I don't kneel, I feel I'm very disrespectful. Swaziland is a kingdom of just over a million people. It's a tiny pocket, a quarter the size of Tasmania, tucked between South Africa and Mozambique. With little industry, tourism is the great hope. This rhinoceros breeding program is a pet project of the king's, but it's his majesty's personal life and his country's practice of polygamy that raises eyebrows and opposition. Polygamy is uh, something we find very difficult to understand in our culture. The society of, uh, at the moment, they, they feel that it's important that we continue practicing. And why is that? <laughs> we'll have to ask the society. <laughs> So, I don't know. <laughs> but you're part of the society. You're the leader of Swaziland. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you don't know why it's a good idea? <laughs> I, I have to really ask them uh, myself that, uh, uh, that uh, why, why they think it's such a good idea. <laughs> You're not supposed to talk to the king about these sorts of things, but we believe he has 12 wives and one fiancé. Still a long way off his father's tally of 70 or so wives. And word is, already King Maswati has almost 30 royal children. I understand that protocol stops me from asking you how many wives you have. Yes. But can I ask you how many wives you would like to have? Well, uh... Even then, still protocol will not allow us to say how many will I like to. <laughs> yeah. And what have, I know I cannot ask you how many children you have, but yes. can I ask you how many children you would like to have? Uh, well, I think I'd like to have, uh, you know, a good number. <laughs> what is a good number? <laughs> it's a, just a very good number. <laughs> That's what I would like to have. tradition and ancient rituals of Swaziland, this country is being decimated by a very modern disease. And the figures are tragic. If you're a woman, your life expectancy is 33. If you're a man, chances are you won't make it past 32. That's right, 32. These people are being cut down in their prime by HIV. And despite a very intense education program like this, Infection rates are still one of the highest in the world. What would you say the rate of HIV is in this country at the moment? Uh, between uh, 40 to 46 percent. It's very, very high. Yeah, it is. Can you believe 40 to 46 per cent? Dr. Austin Iziagu is taking me on a tour of one of Swaziland's best hospitals. But still, it's awful. The overcrowding, the sickness, the deaths of so many so young. But HIV doesn't have to be a death sentence, does no. it? So why is it still taking lives here? 
the fear or the stigma. So by the time they come, it's already too late. And they've infected other people? Other people, yeah. And these are the children left behind. There's something like 100,000 orphans in Swaziland. That's 10% of the population. Again, because of stigma, children aren't tested for HIV. But the king has decreed these little ones will be looked after. He's ordered the chief's wives to set up orphanages across the country. To think that the average child won't reach the age of 40 is shocking, isn't it? Yes, uh, it is definitely shocking. Uh, and when you see the many young ones dying uh, and all that, uh, it's something which really touches our heart. The Reed Festival is a chance for these young Swazi virgins to celebrate their chastity. But the king has gone a step further. To fight HIV, he introduced a program of abstinence. Girls under 18 asked to give up sex for five years. And I was so happy to see that uh, the figures of the HIV AIDS rate uh, from their age group, it decreased a lot. Uh, so it helped the country very much. Did you worry at all that the young people might say, <coughs> well, the king has so many wives, he has so many children, and yet we must abstain. We don't discuss how the king should take and how should he not take. It's not something we, we debate. Does the king get much criticism in Swaziland? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the king is trying his level best with the government to provide services and delivery to the people. Would you tell me if you thought he was a bad king? <laughs> I would tell you. No, you I would wouldn't. <laughs> I would tell you. Um, I would tell you. But um, as far as I'm concerned, the king is doing all his best. Clearly, the Swazi girls see the Reed Festival as a time for celebration. It's a breathtaking spectacle, and legend has it. The king may even choose his next queen from their ranks. As part of tradition, the girls must cut a reed for their king. This year, the first to do so is his eldest child, 19-year-old Princess Sakanaso. You might have guessed she's currently studying in California. Well, you got your stagger on, I got my swagger on. You know you got some, my nigga take that thing home. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Thank you. <laughs> what does your dad think of the rap? Um, my dad thinks I'm sick with it. <laughs> he thinks I'm good. Standing here, you look like a child of America. Oh, really? A little, yeah. Why? They always are shocked when I tell them I'm from Africa. Like, no, you're not. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Are you proud to be from Africa? Of course. Gosh, I don't like the way they think they're the only ones who can look good. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I look good, but <laughs> I don't look too shabby either. <laughs> you don't look shabby at all. <laughs> Leading the dancing on the last day of the festival, the globetrotting princess is first and foremost a proud Swazi. Has your daughter taught you a bit of rap? <laughs> <laughs> she had sung for me and did a bit of rapping for me, but uh, me, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but this dancing king isn't a monarch stuck in the past. With all his nation's problems, he knows he needs to rule a modern Swaziland if both king and country are to survive. It is a big challenge, uh, but we have to balance it. I always like to make an example as a piano. You play one key, 
uh, it will not produce very nice music. So in order to produce good music, you need the both keys to play uh, in a piano. So the same thing with our case, if you have the traditions and modernity, you mix it, you mix it together, it works well. But you have to get the notes right Absolutely. for the music to sound good. Definitely, yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're getting the notes right, are you? I'm trying my best. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.